Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. My name is Joanna Coles and this morning we're visiting with Kevin Lyons. He's the Monroe County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Now Kevin, in the spring, all summer, there's always weeds to fight in the pastures. And a lot of times by the fall, we're kind of over it, right? But there are probably some, some things that we can do in the fall to maybe lessen our load the next year. Yeah, I think uh, fall and chemicals aren't the only option, but that's kind of what we're going to focus on here for a few minutes is the chemical option for uh, broadleaf weed control in, in grass pastures and hay fields. And we'll talk a little bit about mowing maybe, but uh, for most people, the best option, the cheapest option, the most effective option is some type, get on some type of chemical spray program. There's things that's labeled for, that's been researched and proven safe and safe for the environment if applied correctly and all those things. And some weeds are just, that's what it's going to take to get to get rid of that population. Not necessarily to get rid of it, but to suppress it because I don't think we're going to just eradicate any kind of pest. There's always going to be something around. So that, that's a little bit what we want to focus on today. But if we know a little bit about the life cycle of that weed, we know yeah. when it's going to appear. And if we know that and can go out and kind of scout those areas, if we can catch it early, we could reduce the amount of chemicals that we have to use. Yeah, there's, there's a, on the label, there's always a range, you know, low rate, higher rate, depending on the, the type of plant, the, the growth state of the plant. Uh, so you can, you can definitely lessen the amount of chemical you use if you get it quick. A good example is the buttercup mm -hmm. and chickweed. Those are kind of winter annuals. Uh, you'll see that pretty yellow flower and start getting calls about it in the pastures in the spring. That, that's what we're talking about, the yellow buttercup. So that plant will die after it drops the seed in the spring and those seed will germinate in the fall. And if you can spray in the fall when the seed is quarter, half dollar size, you use a lot less chemical. Usually the grass is, is shorter by that time so you can get better coverage. And it's really a, a good effective strategy if you're wanting to spray uh, some chemical and get your uh, weed system kind of in place to manage those a little bit. Because those are one of the first ones I feel like that we have major problems mm -hmm. with. And usually we don't get the call until you see the yellow flower. Mm -hmm. But the yellow flower, the seed's already there. It's, We've already kind of seeded the next crop. And I think mm -hmm. that's what makes that weed somewhat difficult. Yeah. Um, and the other problem in Kentucky is we have to have those 50 degree days for that chemical to be active and to be effective. Yeah. And sometimes in February and March, Kevin, <laughs> we just never know. No. So fall is a little bit more predictable. It is, and I, I, I've probably used this example before, but there's been a few years where I've sprayed during the Thanksgiving break, mm -hmm. and if you catch catch the temperature out in decent weather, it, it's perfectly fine, and a lot of folks are a little hesitant to try it. They, they think you have to that you have to seed stuff in the spring, you have to spray in the spring, and that's not necessarily always your only option. Sometimes it's not even your best option. Yeah. So uh, uh, think about uh, getting on a, a schedule where you can spray some in the fall, help keep that spring uh, weeds that come through uh, down. And then I, I always kind of think that then you got the second wave. You got your the things that's gonna come on late spring and really flourish in the summertime, like a cocoa burr, jimson weed, horse nettle, all those type of things. To me, those take kind of another level of chemical mm -hmm. and uh, a little bit stronger, a little bit tougher weeds. So you wanna use something that's got some residual in it if you spray in the in the fall, you can get by sometimes with a cheaper spray, like a 2,4-D base spray. It's a little less expensive, doesn't have that residual, and will and do a good job on those small weeds. Absolutely. And the other thing I know we fought a lot in Kentucky is thistle. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times we can catch those small thistles in the fall. Yeah, they're, and, yeah, they're just as well as the buttercup and, and the chickweed and, and those things that we're going to see that's going to come on in February and March. And Kevin, if you had problems with these weeds before, you can almost bet that you're gonna have problems with them again. So if you can kind of remember where on your farm mm -hmm. some of those problem areas are and scout just that area, I think you would be more successful in, as far as overall weed control. Absolutely, you don't you don't wanna spray something that's not gonna need it, but uh, the buttercup seemed like it's really come on to be a big problem the last year or two. Everybody's kind of digging with it in some, in some level. Uh, so if you had it this year and you've had yellow flowers, you didn't spray, 
you're going to have more yellow flowers next year. Yeah. So look at that, look at that fall spraying for buttercup control. All right, Kevin, well, I certainly appreciate the information. If you have questions on fall pasture weed control, contact your local extension office. Thanks for watching and have a great day.